So if you have an Apple Watch, you can now unlock your iPhone while wearing a face mask. We have that and tons of other things to talk about in this iOS 14.5 beta update. Check it out right now. What's up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. Let's talk about iOS 14.5. So right off the bat, under software updates, you see a brand new update splash screen. So it tells you the current version that you're running. It tells you you're updated to the latest version with all the bug fixes and security enhancements. It also tells you the last time you checked for an update. Pretty cool. So that same feature is now also in the watch app. So let's head over to the watch app. If we go to general, we go to software update. There you go. See the same thing. Your watch is up to date with the latest bug fixes and security enhancements and the last check time is there as well. Now notice this, you get a horizontal boot screen on your iPad. Now this only occurs when you have your magic keyboard connected like I do here. If it's not connected, the Apple logo will show in portrait mode. And for some carriers like T-Mobile on 14.5, you'll notice a new standalone cellular switch in the cellular settings. So some of the initial 5G rollouts actually rely on pre-existing LTE core networks. And in the case of T-Mobile, the range of that 5G connectivity is gonna be limited by the, you know, the limitations of that mid-band LTE network. And in the long term, standalone 5G will provide lots of advantages. But even now, there are advantages allowing that signal to propagate further than it would with the non standalone implementation. Now, your mileage may heavily vary. As the warning showed, it actually may cause worse performance by enabling standalone. And again, this is all in beta right now. There's just too many moving parts and variables to tell for sure how it's going to affect your connection. Now, there's also worldwide dual SIM support for 5G, finally. Now, if you were a dual SIM customer previously, you would basically be limited to LTE um, if you had both SIMs active at the same time. But now, you can see I have 5G enabled, I have this secondary SIM turned off. Previously, if I turned that on, I would drop down to LTE, but now on 14.5 beta, when I turn it on, 5G connectivity remains for both SIMs. So that's a significant update for dual SIM customers. Let me know, do you use an eSIM along with your nano SIM? Sound off down below in the comments section. I'm really interested to hear if you use dual SIMs and why you use dual SIMs on your iPhone, let me know. So let's switch gears a bit and talk about the music app. So one of the cool new features that you'll find under the listen now section, of course, you have your music for you, which is curated based on your listening habits and things of that nature. Well, now in iOS 14.5, if you go to your library, no, not that. If you go to your library and you go to edit, you're going to actually be able to add the made for you section right in your library, just like that. So anytime you add one of those made for you playlists, that playlist will actually appear underneath the made for you section in your library, which is kind of cool, right? So you go there, there you go. So you get your chill mix, you get your new music mix, super simple, super easy. And you can of course save those for offline playback if you wish. Now this may not seem like a big deal, but I think it's pretty cool. You now have the exact release date of music within the music app. So this, this EP was released on April 6, 2020. With access to so much music, I think that's a super handy feature. What do you guys think? And your scrolling metadata view now returns on your now playing lock screen interface. So you get not only the artist, but you get the name of the album and the name of the song. You get all that detail and it's no longer truncated. I personally don't know why Apple got rid of this in the first place, but good to have it back. And in 14.5, there is a dedicated search tab now in the stock news app. So it just makes it easier to quickly search for a topic that you're looking for. You can search by topic, you can search by channel or search for a particular story as well. So if I type in iPhone, of course, I'm going to get tons of stories related to the iPhone. And I think I'll tap this one from Bloomberg. So a dedicated search tab, certainly not a uh, game changer by any stretch of the imagination, but again, worthwhile usability improvement in my opinion. And speaking of usability, you can now easily sort your reminders list, not just manually, but now by due date, by creation date, by priority, by title even, and you can sort by ascending or descending. So there's manual of course, 
But now if I go in and sort by, I can choose title in this case. And there we go. Go back and I'll set to descending instead. Now, another cool thing in reminders for 14.5 is print support. So if you tap the ellipsis button, you'll see a print button right off the bat in your popover list. Just tap that and you can print to your air print printer. And of course you can always pinch out of the print preview like that to get your nice little simple and easy ready to share document. 14.5 includes controller support for the DualSense controller for the PS5 and the Xbox Series X controller. I still have neither console because I refuse to pay those scalper prices. And in 14.5, you'll be happy to know that you have AirPlay 2 support for Apple Fitness Plus. So this will enable you to wirelessly stream both the audio and the video from your Apple Fitness Plus workouts to an AirPlay 2 compatible set-top box or television. In this case, I'm just sending to my Apple TV 4K. Now I'm sending to an Apple TV, but the limitation comes when you connect to another type of set-top box or television, you're not gonna get your metrics displayed and you'll have to rely on your Apple Watch for that. So just something to keep in mind when using AirPlay 2 with a compatible set-top box or a television. Now another awesome 14.5 feature are the redesign guides within the Maps app. So notice the animations for these guides, watch this. That's really cool. You get a nice full bleed header there at the top and you get some redesigned buttons as well. You can scroll down and see that full guide there and you scroll back down like that. The animation is so slick. Look at that. Now let's look at another one here. Let's try our Michelin guide. Just tap on that and then scroll up like this. See it pop into view, full bleed header. What do you guys think about these guides? Do you use the guides within the Maps app? Do you like the redesign? Let me know down below in the comments. And the podcast app got a significant redesign, starting with the new search page, which obviously takes some of its, its cues from the music app, from the TV app, those categories that you get within the search page. So you can just simply tap on a category to sort of drill down uh, to a specific sections specific interest I should say and then of course you can go in and also search in your library or across the entire Apple podcast directory now on the listen now page of course there are some subtle things that have changed here for instance if you tap on the podcast within listen now it'll take you to the podcast details for that episode it won't just start playing that episode but there is now a dedicated play button within each of those little episodes that you can tap as well but my favorite change for the podcast app has to do with the updated library, because that's really cool. Let me show you that. So first of all, at the top, you notice some new glyph icons and some of the wording has also been altered slightly. And now you have this popover, which includes your new station and ad via URL, but you can also go in and use that to edit your library and choose whatever sections you want to display there. But that's not all. Let me show you what's really cool the redesigned show page with the full bleed header at the top, which is color matched to the album artwork or to the podcast artwork, I should say. So the happy hour background is a little dark. So let me show you the exponent background. You can see it's color matched clearly there uh, on this redesigned podcast show page. And of course you have that button at the top pertaining to the latest and greatest episode. I think the podcast updates are very well done. And in 14.5, you have an updated type to Siri interface. So if you enable type to Siri via your accessibility settings and you, you invoke Siri, you basically get this sort of typing interface so that you don't actually speak to Siri. You just type in the queries that you want Siri to respond to. So I could say, send a message, or I could say, give me the weather, et cetera, et cetera. So in this case, I'm just gonna type weather tap return and there it gives me the weather without me having to actually speak to Siri, right? That's the whole gist of type to Siri, but notice how it takes focus away from your current operation, which is how Siri used to work even with the voice response, right? When you would invoke Siri, it would just basically take you away, whisk you away to its own Siri interface. But here in 14.5, I'm gonna enable type to Siri. Notice what happens when I invoke Siri with type to Siri enabled in 14.5. It stays on your current location, wherever you are within the interface. Obviously, if you tap on the screen outside of the type to Siri interface, it dismisses Siri, right? But it's just nice because you, you 
keep context. You maintain context. You're not whisked away to some dedicated Siri page, but basically you get this nice overlay that you can use. You can type in here your query, just type in weather, and just like that, weather appears right on top of the current UI. And yeah, so it works much more like standard Siri does in iOS 14. Now you get a similar update with the send message with Siri interface. So when I ask Siri to send the message, you get this little pop-up and this works with type to Siri or the regular voice controlled Siri as well. So nice new refresh interface for sending messages with Siri. And then finally, the biggest feature in iOS 14.5, the ability to unlock your iPhone while wearing a face mask, as long as you have an Apple watch that's unlocked on your wrist with the passcode enabled, you're gonna be able to unlock your iPhone without taking your face mask off. Now this will only work with unlocking. It doesn't work with any other sort of uh, face ID authentication after you've unlocked, but it works pretty well. So you just hold your iPhone up, it unlocks. Let me show you how this works. So basically you go into the passcode and touch ID settings here, and you'll see a new Apple Watch switch to unlock with Apple Watch. And as you can see, your Apple Watch must be nearby, it must be on your wrist, it must be unlocked, and it must have a passcode. I've updated to watchOS 7.4 beta here. All right, this is my Apple Watch Series 6. So we're gonna go ahead and flip the switch. It's that easy, that's all you have to do. So now, all we need to do is to simply hold our iPhone up with the face mask on, it unlocks and you get haptic feedback on your wrist and your Apple Watch will actually tell you it unlocked your phone as well. Now you can also lock your phone with your Apple Watch and that will force you to have to re-authenticate with either Face ID or with your passcode. So that can be handy. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind, if, you're, if you have sleep mode enabled, you're not gonna be able to unlock using your Apple Watch. So I just enabled sleep mode and I'm trying to unlock and it tells you turn off sleep mode on Apple Watch to use it to unlock. And of course, if you take your Apple Watch off, put it back on, you don't unlock the watch, you're not gonna be able to unlock using your Apple Watch either. It's gonna give you a message saying, hey, unlock your Apple Watch first to use it to unlock. So, I mean, pretty straightforward stuff, right? But again, super handy feature. Overall, iOS 14.5 is a massive update. What do you guys think? What's your favorite feature? Let me know down below in the comment section. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.